How does the bite force, teeth and saliva, differ in species that eat other animals versus those that eat plants? What does this say about what type of diet humans were designed for? Sure. Well, right off the bat, when you look at the saliva, the saliva of, of, of meat-eating species doesn't contain any digestive enzymes because clearly you can't liberate digestive enzymes in the mouth, which tasks with the job of chopping up and reducing uh, the, the body of an animal down to uh, chunks of meat that are, that, are, that are able to be swallowed. So that means that it's highly likely that in the process of biting, ripping, wrestling with this animal, you're going to injure yourself. Well, if you start releasing digestive <laughs> enzymes in that situation, you're going to digest away your mouth. Okay? Um, so there are no digestive enzymes in the saliva of carnivores. Herbivores, on the other hand, are uh, um, consuming plant starches which have to be processed first by chewing, and the purpose of chewing is to mix them with the saliva which contains starch digesting enzymes. So the actual process of digestion begins in the mouth as the animal is chewing the food. Now, even in the extreme herbivores like the ruminants, which have the multiple stomachs that eat a diet that's primarily cellulose, what they do is they come along and they actually just scoop up um, uh, grass and swallow it. They, they, they don't, initially, they don't, they don't chew it. They swallow it. It goes into their first stomach, which actually contains this bacterial soup. And the reason they have the bacteria there is because bacteria release enzymes that will break down cellulose. And so they will stoop, scoop up a stomach full of grass, let it soak up those bacteria enzymes, then they bring it up and chew their cud. And the purpose of chewing the cud is to mix the grass with the bacterial enzymes. So again, the process of digestion begins as they're chewing. Then they swallow it, it goes into a separate stomach, and the process of digestion proceeds uh, apace. So um, carnivores and herbivores uh, handle their food very, very differently. And the herbivores do have enzymes in their saliva. The carnivores don't. How does the breast milk of humans compare to that of animals that eat other animals versus animals that eat plants? What does this say about what types of food humans were designed to eat? Sure. Well, <clears throat> the thing that people have to understand is that milk is not some magic elixir that just by virtue of being milk means that it's uh, uh, it's just good. Milks are designed by nature to be species specific. So, for instance, if, let's say you had a dog and your dog had puppies and your dog had puppies right at the same time your wife delivered your child and your wife brought the new baby home the dog delivered puppies, but then the dog died. And let's say your wife said, you know what, honey, since I'm already breastfeeding our baby, I'm going to breastfeed these puppies. Those puppies would die. And the reason they would die is because there is not enough fat or protein in human milk to sustain the growth rate of those puppies. So in general, Carnivore infants are born at a very immature stage of development. Their pregnancies are very short. Typically, they are 12 to 16 weeks. And that makes sense because clearly a pregnant uh, um, female carnivore can't have this huge belly and be out there chasing other animals, wrestling with them, and trying to kill them because she'd end up killing herself and and her, her, uh, her baby that she was carrying. So they have short pregnancies, deliver these very immature uh, 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 infants that essentially complete their development outside the womb. But as a result, carnivore milks are very high in fat, very high in protein. Why are they so high in protein? Because proteins are building blocks. 
Uh, proteins, protein is not used for energy. Protein is used to make tissue. And you only need a lot of protein if you're rapidly building tissue. So again, carnivore milks have much more protein in general than uh, the milk from uh, plant eating species because carnivore infants are growing at a much more accelerated uh, pace than, than uh, 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 herbivore uh, or plant eating uh, uh, species. Um, they also have a lot more fat. And again, it's because these babies need a lot more energy because they are growing a lot faster. Um, and uh, and it, it turns out that not only do they have a lot more protein, but that when you look at the, the composition of those proteins, they're very different from species to species because the amino acid composition of the proteins determine how growth stimulatory they are. And so the proteins that are found in carnivore milks are very pro-stimulatory. Uh, they stimulate growth very aggressively, and that's as it should be because anybody who's seen baby kittens or baby or puppies that have just been born, they, 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 they're almost barely formed. Uh, their, their eyes are closed. They can't regulate their body temperature. Um, they are, they're like little, they almost look like uh, um, miscarried fetuses because they're, they're so, so immature and they have to have a lot of energy, protein, and so forth to, to help them to grow. Now you contrast that again with the herbivores and, and the, the two that, that I want to focus on are cows and humans. What's interesting about cow and human milk is that in terms of the total amount of solids, it's essentially the same. In terms of the amount of fat that's in cow's milk versus human milk, it's actually uh, uh, the same. But what's different is cow's milk has one and a half times as much protein as human milk, but human milk has almost one and a half times as much uh, sugar as, cow, as cow's milk. So why those differences? Well, number one, even though from a percentage standpoint, the amount of fat in cow's milk versus human milk is the same, it's completely different fat. Uh, when you look at cow's milk, whole cow's milk, it is uh, thick, creamy, opaque, white. When you look at uh, human breast milk, it is thin and translucent. And that's because the fat that's in human breast milk is unsaturated fat. The fat that's in cow's milk is highly saturated, which is why you can churn it and, and get butter or take it and make ice cream. You can't do that with human milk. Um, and as I said, there's a lot more protein in the cow's milk because a baby calf is growing at a much faster rate than a baby human. Um, a, a baby calf basically will go, from, if it's allowed to live its natural lifespan, from birth to adult weight in like two to three years. That's a phenomenal growth rate because you're talking about going, on, going from roughly 65 to 70 pounds to 1,000 pounds in three years. And so the proteins that are in uh, cow's milk, casein, uh, BSA, bovine serum, albumin, and so forth are very growth stimulatory proteins. Um, and they're designed to make that baby calf grow. Um, and they do the same thing to humans when we feed the uh, cow's milk to human kids, but that is not good for us in the long run because studies have shown that human children who are brought up on cow's milk have a much higher risk and rate of breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, heart disease, uh, high blood pressure, and stroke as they move through their lives. So it, this, 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 this pro-stimulatory growth effect these protein, cow proteins have on human physiology ultimately create disease in the long run. But what's even worse is, as I said, even though a human infant is, what, eight pounds at birth versus 65, a 65-pound 65 calf, still the human uh, breast milk has 
uh, about one and a half times as much sugar. Why is that? It's because proportionately the human infant's brain is so much larger than the cow's brain, and the brain prefers to use only sugar for its metabolism. So when people raise their babies on cow's milk, they're actually starving that baby's brain because it's not getting enough sugar for the amount of energy that it needs.